All right, welcome back to another beautiful day in Sydney, and it's the middle of winter. Who would have guessed it? And it's beaming sunshine. So today we're outside again, and we are doing little exercises that you can do to help you to stop you getting little tweaks in your neck and your scap when you're doing shoulder press, which is the sort of the clients I see all the time, where they are doing overhead work and they're getting lower trap, upper trap, all this sort of medial scap area trigger points and knots and tweaks and their neck, they call it their neck going out, all in here. And a lot of the time it's because of stiffness and too much activation in the traps when they're pressing over here. So we're gonna give you some little tips to do pre the shoulder press workout, okay? Or above head workout. So first one I get you doing is trying to lose some of the thoracic. So when you use a foam roller like this, what I want you to do is on the, I mean, you do both sides, but on the side that you're getting the problems, what you do is you put that at about mid part of your scap, right hand on the back end so you support your neck, so you don't have to let your head go back, so that gets supported. And you're gonna do a thoracic extension with one arm, okay? So when you go back with the thoracic extension, the arm goes backwards, and it'll force your thoracic into a little bit of extension. Plus you're gonna get some scapular movement overhead without loading up the shoulder, okay? So that gets your range. And this is working on your mobility pre the workout. You just want to be careful. Don't let your lower back roll, of course, okay? Try and keep this turned on here. So the movement comes from your thoracic. God, sunny. The movement comes from your thoracic and your shoulder flexion and try and aim for a little bit out, 30 degrees, external rotation, so your clarity and impingement through the shoulder to get that range. And that'll get you some movement through that part of your thoracic spine in there, which is what you need. So when you when you shoulder press, you need a, a little bit of thoracic extension. So if you don't have that because you've been on a computer or you're in a full position like this, you try and shoulder press, that's one of the reasons why you're gonna get problems here. So having that thoracic movement there and that scapular mobility, so when you go overhead, it's quite important. So that's a good preloader, okay? The other thing I want you working on is making sure you're always doing something rotated cuff soft tissue in there, so get ball so again, trigger point ball, nice hard lacrosse ball like this is perfect, you can always use a tennis ball, and again, go into there, get stuck in, and try and loosen up the sorus tightest edge, be careful you don't bruise it, but try and work on some mobility work through there, now the freer you get your rotator cuff, the better activation is going to be, the better movement over here, okay, so trying to get your rotator cuff loosened up so it does its job when you're pressing so that's a really really good one get stuck into all those areas now the other thing you can do if you find that that foam roller is not localized enough you're not getting enough sort of extension through there or you've got like those knots they're not knots but the trigger point problems and the muscle tightness and the soreness in there if you want to get a wee bit more isolated on Instead of just digging it into the back of your shoulder, what I would do is put it between your shoulder blade and your spine, so right in the middle there. And it's over your rhomboids, your mid scap, okay, into there where your mid trap is. And what you can do is again do the same movement. So now I get to the point where I can feel that load in. Now I can either load down on it or I can just move my arm through it. So when I have the ball fixed in one position, and I move my arm, it's almost like the, you know, a therapist digging their elbow through your soft tissue. So this is a really good way of doing a bit of soft tissue release. And that helps. Just be careful that you don't go and angry, aggravate that tissue because you can load that up too much and make it worse. So just sometimes a little bit of pressure is better than a lot. Right? So that's another way of doing it. So you've got sort of three mobility things you can start working on to free up that movement. So when you press overhead, you look at a little bit better with your overall movement patterning. Now to help you further with the movement patterning, I'm going to get you doing some muscle activation work. Now this is to get your postural muscles activated a little bit more before you start doing all your power work. So what I suggest you do, listen, nine times out of ten when people push over here, they're overactive through their upper traps and underactive through their lower traps. So I'm going to get you doing some lower trap work. So what you do, put your band over a bar or something high, and you can put it over a door, you can do whatever. And what we're going to get you doing is a bit of lower trap 
word it by doing a scap in a row. Now, usually we do scap in rows horizontal, so I'm going to get you doing it on a pull down, which will get you more lower track work. So, this is a really nice warm up to do. Double the band up, and you're just going to go for scapular retraction like that. Okay, now you can see I've got to try and straighten that arm. So, all the way forward into protraction, okay, and then you're going to go down, pull down into retraction, right? But there's depression going on. Make sure you don't arch your back. So go into a lunge stance, whatever stance you like doing. Okay. Pull it down and back. Try and avoid the full pull through. So don't pull through like that. So we're just trying to get shoulder blade retraction depression. Okay. So I'm firing up my lower trap in preparation. So it just works a little bit better to help rotate my scapula upwards and outwards. So when I press, I've got proper scapular movement, and I don't sort of, if I'm, if I'm not active enough in my lower trap, and I don't rotate my scapula up when I press, my upper trap has to do more work to lift it up there. Okay, so that's one of the issues why we get blowing up and through here, because this stuff is not rotating the scapula well enough, okay? So lower traps is a really good one to do. The second one I want you doing is doing a press one. Now, I've completely stolen this from Jeff Cavalier, Athlete X, so thank you, Jeff. Love this one. This one here is using a ball to activate my serratus. So when I press over here, I've got serratus activation, which remember, if you're using serratus, it helps your abduction when you go through up on abduction of the scapula when you press over here. And if you're not using it, it's underactive, upper trap works too hard again. So what you do is put that up against the wall like this, okay? And I would sort of, you try and work out where you're going to put the ball by going as high as you can and so you still get your hand on the ball. And then you come back down to start. Now, for this position here, I'm pushing into the ball straight forward, okay? So I'm trying to protract in under here and I keep that pressure on as I go through a short press movement, okay? Make sure I get full elevation. When I come down, you've got to get that shoulder down into depression but keep the pressure on here, try and keep the forearm reasonably vertical and just go through that movement. Now like Jeff says, this one really unsticks your shoulder and helps get your movement pattern, which is better, which is what we really want. We want our movement patterning of our scapular human rhythm correct when we shoulder press, because a lot of the time it's not correct. We've got overload of muscles here and underactivated muscles there. And if they're stiff, or if you've got stiff thoracic and stiff shoulders, it's going to make things worse. It's like trying to open a door that's really stiff. You have to put more power through it, and that's when they get overloaded. So doing a shoulder press, you know, blows people's or tweaks people's necks out. So just check both sides too, because there is some element of being a left and a right hand and it comes into play here. So when you're doing movement pattern stuff, being a right hand, and you might find that you're better on the right hand side. So you've got to make sure you're doing the left hand side just as much, if not more, if you're right handed, to make sure that that boot pattern is correct. So really keep that pressure on, and this way you can make it as hard as you like. You can start you know, loading in here. If I, if I go, say, right leg back, my left hand's on it, I can power through my glute, which helps me with my better posterior swing, so I can really get in there, and I can get some stability where I'm going, so I can really push into the ball a little bit more, because my base is support here, a little bit more solid. So that's a really nice one to do, pre-loading, is get that pressure going. Okay, now the last one, 